Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This video is another in the series of videos about digital logic. And in this video, I'm going to give some more in-depth examples about Carnot maps. So let's take a look at uh, our Carnot maps. And first, I'm going to draw out a uh, map showing the positions of things. All right, I'm reading the value so that A is the most significant bit and D is the least significant bit. So 0, 0, 0, 0 works out to 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on and so forth. Right. Okay, let's take a look at uh, a standard notation for describing uh, how a logic function might behave. And that is to say we have a summation of something or a pi of something. And these are called our min terms. And these are called our max terms. And what they represent is a little bit counterintuitive. The min terms evaluate to 1. The max terms evaluate to 0. There's also the situation where we may have the summation of something, comma, and then you'll see a D and something in there. And these are don't care terms. And those are terms that, uh, however you may determine you want it to be, could evaluate to 0 or 1. And I will show those in a moment here. So let's take a look at an example here. What if we have the summation of uh, 4, 5, 7, 12, 13, and 15? All right, draw a map here. And we're going to say, okay, 4 evaluates to a 1, 5 evaluates to a 1, 7 and 12 evaluate to 1s, so that's there and there, 13 and 15 evaluate to 1s. Everything else evaluates to 0. Now the point of this is to find our minimized logic. And we have to find groupings of ones in 2 to the n by 2 to the m uh, dimensions. So I can't just grab all six of these ones in one uh, fell swoop because 3 is not 2 to the n where n is an in integer. So I'm going to group it uh, by 2. The groupings can be wide by 1, 2, 4, eight or same for height. All right, so now I've got that grouping. How do I describe that? All right, so what is common in uh, these two rows? And what is common is that B is a one. I'll just say this, my function equals this. And what is common in those two columns? And I can say that C bar is common. All right, and then I just have this grouping right here. And B is still common for those, and in these, D is common. And so this is my minimized logic expression 
for this, um, I believe it's called can canonical form. All right, let's take a look at a pi of something. So if I have pi of 1, 3, 6, 7, 9, 11, 14, and 15, we'll draw our map. Hopefully I'm not running off the screen here. All right, so 1 and 3 evaluate to 0, 6 and 7 evaluate to 0, uh, 9 and 11 evaluate to zeros, and 14 and 15 evaluate to zeros. Everything else is a 1. All right, now if you may recall from my last video, uh, this is a wrapping space, so uh, you can wrap from the top down to the bottom and uh, from the left over to the right or vice versa for both of those. Sort of like Asteroids or Pac-Man. Alright, and to show that I'm going to grab these corners right there. Alright, and my first term will equal uh, common in the rows here is that b bar is common and common in the columns is d bar. And then here is another grouping and common to those is b and c bar. Now you might say, well, here's another grouping here, but we've already caught all of those ones with these two functions, so there's just no point in, uh, in adding those into the logic expression. So this here is our minimized logic for this. All right, let's take a look at one with don't cares now. What if I have, I'll draw it down here because it's kind of long. The summation of 0, 1, 8, 9, 10, and 11 with don't cares of 4, 5, 12, and 13. All right, we'll draw our map. I should say that I always label the variables as A, B, C, D, but there's no reason that they need to be that. They could be X, Y, Z, and W, or enable serial bit, um, enable to, and who knows what. Um, it's all just whatever you want to call them. And as uh, like before, this is gray code. And so I'm saying that 0 evaluates to a 0, 1 evaluates to a 0, 8 evaluates to a 0, 9, 10, and 11. And then we have uh, don't, whoops, <laughs> I'm thinking pi. All right, how many of you caught that? All right, uh, and then don't cares are four. So we, we mark a don't care as with an X, five and 12 and 13. And everything else evaluates to a zero. All right, so what I'm going to do is first let's stick with what we know. 
here I have a grouping and what's common to them is A, B bar. Or, now the beauty of don't carrots is that you can use them however you want it. So if I wanted uh, this one to be a zero, could be, that's fine. In this case, I'm going to choose to have them all represent ones. So in this case, I have in common C bar. And this is my minimized logic for that expression. We're going to look at one more case and then we'll be done. What if I have pi of 5 and 13? If we draw our map. pi of 5 and 13 looks like this. Alright, so I could do it this way. If I say my function is equal to, let's find groupings here. Well I could say that this is a grouping but remember that the space wraps and so actually I can group it like this. So what is common to all of those and that is B bar. And I could do just this column but oh, we have all these over here. So I'm going to grab those and what is common to those is D bar. And finally, I'm left with uh, these ones, which I could lump in over here, or if I wanted to be tricky, I could just grab these. And we can, we can have uh, any individual bit be grabbed by as many of these as, as um, makes it work. So in this case I have C. Now another way of looking at this is what if I didn't want to work from the ones? I could say F bar because I'm picking zeros now and if I were to pick these, which I'll just do with a different color, If I did that, I could say that what's common is B and C bar D. Well, we can't leave it in that form really, so let's uh, invert both sides. And simplify using De Morgan's theorem. So, first step, we're going to have uh, B bar C D bar, where we've inverted the individual terms. Next, we swap and for or and vice versa. So that becomes B bar or C or D bar. And then the final step is to invert the whole thing. And as you can see, I've arrived at the same expression as here. So that's just another way. Uh, it might make your life simpler to uh, find your uh, minimized logic. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn more about digital logic, take a look at my YouTube channel. I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com.